Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to show how you can set up a Samba server in your local network. The Samba server can serve as a storage hub. Every important file goes there and you can access it easily from any device on the network, be it another Linux computer, a Windows computer, a Mac or a mobile device. And the best thing about the Samba server, installation is really quick and easy. First, let's make sure that our system is up to date. Now let's install the Samba server. All we have to do really is type apt install Samba. Great, Samba is installed, let's configure it. Let's start by creating a shared Samba folder. This folder is going to be visible from any device on the network, so make sure it doesn't contain anything sensitive. Usually it's best to create a new empty folder, and that's what I am going to do. We now need to allow access permissions to this folder, so the remote clients will be able to add new files and edit existing ones. And we can see that everyone can now access the folder. Let's move on to the configuration of the server itself. The configuration file is located in Etsy Samba. And the configuration file itself is smb.conf. Let's edit it. And then don't scroll to the very bottom of the file. We need a new category here, the guest category. And it's called guest since it allows access without any authentication. Every client on the network can be considered a guest and access the Samba server. And now we need four lines that I'm going to copy from the Samba server wiki. The link will be in the video description below. The first line will specify the path to the shared folder. The next three lines tell the Samba server that it needs to allow guest access. Let's save the file and close it. We now need to restart the Samba service for the configuration to take effect. The Samba service is called SMBD, so let's restart it. And that's it! Our Samba server is up and running. All that's left is accessing it from our clients. Let's find the IP of the server. Okay, so the IP is 0, 1, 10. Let's remember it. And now let's access the server from a few other devices on the network. I'm now at my other computer. It's an Ubuntu machine and it has installed the Thunar file manager as well as the GNOME file manager. We will use both of them to access the Samba server and let's start with the GNOME file manager. I'm going to select other locations and type in the address of the Samba server. And we can see that the prefix for a Samba server is SMB. And right away we get access to the server. The files will be located in the guest folder. And since we didn't set a password, I'm going to connect as anonymous. Let's create a new file in the folder. And the file is on the server. Let's now see how we can access the Samba server using Thunar, which is another popular file manager. And right away you can see the Samba server on the network. But even if I wouldn't see it, I could go to the address line and type in the address of the Samba server. And once again we're going to select guest and we can see the contents of the server. To access the Samba server from a Windows machine, we just need to open the File Explorer and then in the address line, type in backslash backslash 
and then the IP of the Samba server. And we can see the guest folder, and let's open it. And we can see the contents of the server. We can also access a Samba server from an iOS device. To do that, let's open the Files Manager. And by sliding from the left, I can open the Browse. And here I click on the three dots and connect to server. Let's type in the IP of the server. Then connect. And we want to connect as guest. Then tap on next. And we can see the contents of the server. To upload a new file to the server, let's say I want to upload an image. I can share the image, then save to files, and I'll select the server I just added. Then save. But what if you share your Wi Fi network with other people? And you don't want anyone who knows the IP of your server to be able to access your shared files. There is a simple solution. We can add a password to our server. To be more precise, we don't really set a password to the server. We create a new user on the Linux machine, then add this user to the database of Samba. This way, instead of guest access, we're going to have a user's access. Let's first create the new user. The instructions appear on the same page, on the Samba wiki. First, let's create a new user. Notice that demo user is going to be the username. If you want anything else, change it, but I'm going to go with the default, which is demo user. And now let's add a password to the user. We now need to add this user to the Samba database. So Samba will know this user is allowed to access. I'm going to use the same password that I used for the user itself. All that's left is setting the config file, so it will only allow access to the users in its database. And I'm going to delete the two lines that allow guest access. Let's restart the Samba service. And now, when we try to access the server, we will have to know the credentials, both the username and the password. Then we can access the contents of the Samba server. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.